we can't act on them. Amen. So uh, I just want to spend a few minutes this morning claiming the rights that belong to us as covenant Christians. Amen. We have a, a covenant with God, and uh, we need to know the covenant of God in order to, uh, to receive the promises of God. And unfortunately, some, not all those in Christendom, preach the same message, amen, and they don't, if you, see, if, if you don't know miracles for today, you'll, you'll not have any miracles, okay? If you don't know healing is for today, you'll not be healed, amen? <laughs> if, if you go to a place that doesn't teach on those things, and if you don't believe the, uh, the gift of the Spirit are in operation today, there will be no gifts of the Spirit. If you don't need, know that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for everybody, you'll never receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit because they're not going to talk about it, amen? So, uh, again, I don't know how they, they get around it. I mean, it's pretty plain to me, according to the Word of God, these these things are still in the uh, in, in the operation today. Jesus said in uh, Hebrews thirteen eight, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He's not an Indian giver. He wouldn't give you something and take it back. No, way, man. but he wants us to have these things, and it belongs to us. So, you know, no other country on earth offers its citizens the rights that Americans take for granted every day. We take these rights for granted every day. The first 10 amendments to the Constitution called the Bill of Rights, okay? We have a Bill of Rights. And among those uh, Bill of Rights is the freedom of speech, the right against unlawful seizure and search, the right to a trial by jury. So we have a right to vote. We have a right to worship. We're worshiping God this morning. And those rights were purchased by the blood of men who fought and died for them. We just celebrated... uh, uh, Veterans Day last weekend, okay? But most Americans not only claim those rights, but we demand those rights. Most Americans, they don't, they claim them and they demand them. It's my right, freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom for a uh, trial by jury. Yet so often those same people claim their American rights, haven't even bothered to find out what their rights are that accompany the citizenship of the kingdom of God. We have rights as citizens of the kingdom of God. Every person has a right, okay? We have, we have certain rights, okay? Now, if you're one of those people, I want to give you a news flash this morning. Here's the news flash. God would not be outdone by the United States government. God will not be outdone by the U.S. government. Everything that our earthly government offers us, God provides and more and more. The Bible says the government is on Jesus' shoulders. <laughs> so what our government provides, God provides that and even more. As Christians, we should never be caught wallowing in our circumstances. Our spiritual rights have been purchased by the blood of Jesus. And you won't benefit from those rights if you don't know that you have them. You will not benefit by those rights if you don't know that you have those rights, okay? Once you search the Scripture and discover your rights, you still have to claim them. So we search the Scriptures, the Word of God. We find out what they are, but we still have to claim those rights. We have to claim them, okay? You know, I've never searched for gold, but I've heard how it's done. Anybody ever search for gold? (laughs) But I know how it's done, okay? Hey, yeah, oh, bless God. So finding the gold isn't enough, okay? Once you search it out, you have to go to the right office and you have to file a claim, right? That's the way they did it back in the, in the gold days, okay? Now, if someone challenges that claim, you have the right to stand on your legal rights and to fight that. Likewise, before you will ever live a victorious life, you've got to stake your claim to your rights and fight for them. It's your right to be healed in Jesus' name. It is your right to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. It is your right. The Bible says this in Hosea 4, 6, and it is so true. It says, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. So people don't know what their rights are today. They're going to be destroyed by that. And churches are full even today right here in Maryville, Indiana, are not preaching the full counsel of God. It says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. It's because you have rejected knowledge, and I will also reject you from being the priest for me, Rutro, 
because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Man, that's quite an indictment. Amen? So lack of knowledge about what? Lack of knowledge about our rights and our privileges as children of the kingdom of God. You'll never grasp your rights if you don't understand that they belong to you. You'll never receive them unless you know that they belong to you. Eons ago, God created the angels, and Lucifer was the prince of the morning star. We know this story. He worshiped God. He walked with uh, with, uh, Michael and Gabriel. He played music from the tablets that God formed on the inside of him, and the angels were innumerable, and they sang and they glorified God. All heaven and earth were in a perfect state at this time. That was until iniquity was found in Lucifer. Do you know that what great sin he committed? The Bible said he sowed discord among the angels. He sowed discord among the angels. He flapped his lips and caused one-third of the angel to leave God, okay, to fall. So we need to stop and think before we sow discord in our homes in our workplace, and especially in the church. See, God doesn't take that lightly. Lucifer ascended into heaven, and he brought destruction into the kingdom of God. There was a great war, and Jesus said this. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, Luke 10, 18. He said, I beheld Satan like lightning fall from heaven. If you look at the book of Revelation, you'll find out that the lightning that proceeded from the throne is the anointing, is the anointing. When Lucifer got booted from heaven, God stripped him of his anointing. When he got left heaven, he was stripped of all the anointing that he had. That's the price you'll pay for discord. You will lose your anointing, okay? It cost him the anointing. Lucifer became spiritually dead, full of malice, hatred, and the Bible said he was the father of all lies. He began defaming everything that God created, especially man. Adam was the smartest and the most beautiful man ever lived. He was the smartest and the most beautiful man that ever lived. God gave him power and dominion over everything that he created. Adam ruled the stars, the sun, the universe, the galaxies, the planets. Eve ruled and reigned with him. So your wife gets to rule and reign with you guys. Bless God. So I want you to understand that God did not look over his shoulder, checking to see, to make sure everything was all right with Adam and Eve. He let them do exactly what they wanted to do. Then in the cool of the day, he showed up and he walked and he talked with his creation. And when they committed high treason through sin, he brought three judgments on the Garden of Eden. Three judgments came on, up on the Garden of Eden when they did that. Number one judgment came upon the snake. One upon woman and one upon man. So three judgments in the Garden of Eden. One against the snake, one against the man, one against the woman. In those days, serpents could walk. They had legs. Did you know that? They had legs. They walked. God said because the serpent listened to Satan, he would eat dust for the rest of his life. So that judgment is still in effect today. Snakes crawl on their bellies. And the animal kingdom came under the curse because of sin. The animal kingdom came under the curse because of sin. Then God looked at Adam, looked at Eve, and he said this in Genesis 3, 16. He said, to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conceptions. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. In other words, not only would the woman, a woman's great blessing, bearing children, be painful to her, but she would also live her life desiring to be equal with her husband, but he would rule over her. That's what God said, okay? This curse has been throughout all history. Inequality for women began with sin. Before it, man and woman lived in harmony. After it, they did not. Today, up, there's an uphill battle for women's right that still rages in most parts of the world. They can't drive, they can't... They got to keep their face, but you know, so it rages all over the world. Yet Christ sacrificed over 2,000 years ago on the cross, brought salvation for that curse for Christian men and women, a way out of this 
uh, distortion of our relationships towards one another brought on by the sin at the entrance into the earth. Now, the Bible tells us that through Christ, we are all equal. So through Jesus, we are all equal today. Galatians 3.28 says this. It says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there are neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, what happened? What happened, Adam? Well, God told him in Genesis chapter 3, verses 17 to 19, here's what he told him. He said, Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and you have eaten from the tree of which I have commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake in toil. And you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. And in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken from the dust you are, and from the dust you shall return. So for man, the curse was also very harsh. The ground which Adam had tended was now cursed. In other words, Adam's job would be much more difficult. His occupation would cause him to sweat and work all the days of his life. Maybe that's why we got all these weeds in our yard, right? Bless God, we're always fighting these weeds, man. Weed killer and all, plucking dandelions because of the curse. So when God cursed the ground, it said thorns and thistles came up. And we get them in our yard today. Thistles, amen. The Bible teaches that even nature groans and travails to be brought back to its original state. The earth travails, wants to be brought back to its original state. That's why Jesus wore a crown of thorns. It wasn't an accident. It was by design. He had a crown of thorns on his head. Jesus came to reverse the entire curse, including the curse of the ground. Now, that's not all. He redeemed the animal kingdom because of Jesus. They didn't have to sacrifice any more lambs, pigeons, doves, or cattle. See that? He redeemed the animal kingdom. No more sacrifices. No more killing lambs and, and doves and pigeons and cattle. He redeemed them. Last but not least, Jesus redeemed all mankind from the curse of the law. You see, God loved man so much that he sent his son to die a cruel death on the cross, paying the price for the sin of all mankind. Now think about Adam for a minute. God told him that when he ate of that forbidden fruit that he would die. And we know that God wasn't talking about physical death because Adam lived physically for 930 years. So we're just getting started, folks. Bless God. 930 years, okay? He died spiritually in that day in the garden. He was cut off from the life of God that may have sustained him in that body for eternity. Yet Adam was so full of power, the power of God in his body, that it took sin and sickness and demons and diseases and Lucifer hundreds of years to kill him. He was so full of the power of God. It took 930 years to kill him. Amen. The day that Adam sinned, he handed over all of his rights and all of his dominion to the earth, of the earth, the planets and the animals and the galaxy. He handed them over to Lucifer. I know this is Christianity 101, but I'm trying to make a point here, okay? God had a plan to get this planet Earth back legally, like it was under Adam. So if you think about it, when Satan tempted Jesus, he said, all these kingdoms I will freely give to you. Remember, he tempted him in the wilderness. Satan said, all these kingdoms I will freely give to you. Jesus didn't contend with the devil about that because he knew that Satan legally owned it, okay? And that's what made the temptation real. Satan was offering Jesus what he legally possessed at that particular time, which was the earth. Jesus refused to compromise. He went to the cross, took on himself all the sins of the world, then he died, went to hell, and he beat the devil on his own turf. The second or the last Adam, Jesus, did what the first Adam should have done. He took dominion over the devil, legally took back the rights for mankind to be reunited with God in this earth. So why hasn't the devil left? Good question. 
Why hasn't the devil left? I hear a lot of people ask that question. Why hasn't the devil left? He's still ruling and reigning over anyone that doesn't know Jesus. He is still ruling and reigning over everyone that doesn't know Jesus. He has a, a legal right to sell them into slavery, to get them on drugs, to bring them divorce and famine. He has a right to kill and destroy. He doesn't have the right to bring any of those curses on a believer, but he has it on non-believers, okay? That's why it's crucial that you know your scriptural bill of rights. We have to know what our scriptural bill of rights are, and then we have to claim them for ourselves. Here's the first scriptural bill of rights found in John chapter 14, verse 12. One of my favorite scriptures. It says, it's in red, so you know it's what Jesus said. He says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me and the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whenever you ask, whatever you ask in my name, I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I prayed last week for Lexi, their granddaughter, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I said, you got it because you ask in the name of Jesus. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Amen? Now the manifestation will come, but she got it. Bless God. Anybody you pray for to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they, they, they got it. So the first thing I notice about this passage of Scripture here, that Jesus always glorifies the Father. Now, if that was important for him to glorify the Father, then the body of Christ or the church should be about that same business. It was in, if it was important to Jesus to glorify the body, the, the, the Father, it should be the church's job to be about the same business as Jesus did. How do we glorify the, the, the Father? By doing the things that Jesus did. Causing the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, the dead to be raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. He said he promised that the works that he did, we could do in even greater works because there are more of us. There was only one Jesus, okay? Now, have you done anything greater than Jesus lately? That's a question for you. It's time to start claiming our rights. I warn you, there is one stipulation to this promise. There's one stipulation to this promise. It isn't in fasting. It isn't in prayer. It isn't in sacrificial giving. It's in believing. <laughs> it's in believing. It's not in fasting. It's not in prayer. It's not in sacrificial giving. It is believing. It is believing. A lot of Christians glorify the name of Satan. I don't want to hear anything about Satan. Talk to me about what God has done for you. Don't glorify the devil just because some bad things happened to you, okay? Just go to the Father and glorify him. Father, Jesus delegated all authority to us in John chapter 14. We just read it, okay? He delegated all authority to us. And you said, I am seated in the heavenly places with you. Therefore, I take authority over every situation. That's got to be our confession. I take authority over every situation that's going on in my life and those around me. People have been fighting for centuries that all they need to do was to stand. Well, when you stand in faith and patience, the Bible says you will inherit the promises of God. When you stand in faith and patience, faith and hoopamony, you receive the promises of God, okay? Sometimes I think God must wonder why his kids don't just pray out of their hearts and instead of their heads and, and cross it with, with Jesus' name, in it with Jesus' name, amen? Then the devil would know that, hey, these people are, are in Jesus. Instead, most people have Satan on the front pew of their church. They, they give him place when the Bible commands us not to give the, any place to the devil. Don't give the devil any place, amen, no place. Submit yourself to God. Sometimes we get sidetracked with what Satan is trying to pull, and we forget that Jesus told us to ask anything in his name, and he would do it. He said it right here. He said, you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. There is no excuse for spiritual weakness, poverty, and the family of God when the wealth of heaven belongs to us. It belongs to us. 
You're not supposed to come to God like a tramp, amen? You come to God, to Him, legally, as a son. We're sons and daughters of God, amen? All of us. If you confess Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, you're a son and daughter of God, amen? Remember the story of the prodigal son? This is a good illustration. The elder brother had a tramp attitude. He was as much a son as the prodigal, but he had a servant's attitude. He owned everything his father had, but he whined. He was a whiner. Dial 1-800-WHAN, okay? He was a whiner, okay? <laughs> See, he said, you won't even give me a goat to have a party with my friends. That's what he said. That's what the Bible says, okay? His daddy looked at him. He said, what's the matter with you? Don't you know that everything I got is yours? Listen, do you know why he never got a goat or a cow? He didn't know his rights and privileges. He did not know his rights and privileges in the family, yet he had the audacity to walk out of the party. His daddy loved him so much that he followed him outside and tried to talk some sense into him. How many times have you and I acted that way towards God? If someone isn't saved, he is a slave. If someone isn't saved, he is a slave. The Bible says you're either a child of God or a child of the devil. So what do we do to get, get you to become a child of God? All power. People say nobody has all power except God. Really? Let's look what the Bible says. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18, it says this. It says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Again, people say, well, all power has been given to Jesus, but uh, it hasn't been given to us. Now, hold on just a minute with your religious self, Okay. Look at the first chapter of Ephesians chapter 1, okay? And then and, and through verse, or starting in verse number 17. And it says here, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what, you have, what the riches of His glory, of His inheritance in the saints, and what is exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly in heavenly places far above all principalities and power and might and dominion in every name that is named not only in this age but the age to come and he will put all things under your feet and give him to be head over of all things the church, which is his body and the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now, if you look down at the next, uh, at the next uh, chapter, verse number 6, it says this, Ephesians 2, 6, it says, And raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We have the same power and authority that Jesus had when he walked this earth. When he, when he ascended to heaven, he transferred that power to us. But most Christians, they don't claim it, they don't believe it, and they live a defeated life. They live a defeated life. Now, now I want to make sure that you get this this morning. The day that Jesus, that God raised Jesus out of the pit of hell, he raised you too. He raised you and he raised me. He set us at the right, right beside of Jesus, far above every devil, every demon. Not only that, but he gave you and me power of eternity power of eternity to use the name of Jesus. We have the power of eternity because our eyes have been enlightened and we understand the Word of God. We understand the Word of God. You are a citizen of heaven who happens to be living here upon the earth. We're all citizens of heaven, but we happen to be living here upon the earth, okay? No demon from hell has the right or the authority to bring any of Satan's curses to you. You were bought by Jesus Christ. You are sitting with him in heavenly places. Your physical body might be seated here, but your spiritual authority is seated with Jesus in heavenly places right now. All you have to do is claim it. You've got to claim it. Now, what do you have right to claim? Eternal life, a home in heaven, God's protective care, victory over sin, the indwelling of the Holy, the Holy Spirit, speaking tongues, divine health, prosperity, to be translated in the rapture, 
to live with the Father throughout eternity and every other promise from in the book of uh, in the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. It belongs to us. So one of our rights is liberty, not just liberty guaranteed in the Constitution, but the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, look what it says. It says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Spirit of the Lord is here today. There is liberty in this place. There is liberty in this place. Romans 6, 14 says this. It says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law but under grace. We're living under grace. The law will have no effect upon us, okay? Yet churches have preached that you're all sinners saved by grace. Well, I'm just an old sinner, Pastor Jarvis. No, 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 no. No, if you're born again, you're not an old sinner, amen? Your name was changed from sinner to saint. Now you're a saint. St. Larry, St. Mark, Marla, St. Barbara. Bless God. We're saints, man. Made to rule and reign in heavenly places. Praise God. So the Bible says that sin will no longer have dominion over you. The word sin and Satan are synonymous. If you yourself are an old sinner, you're actually saying that Satan has dominion over you. If you're an old sinner, if that's what you say, then Satan's having dominion over you, okay? If you're sinning every day, you've got a sin problem, and you better get to the altar and make Jesus the Lord of your life, okay? Not only in deed, but in word, okay? The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verses 15 and 16, it says, what then? Shall we sin because we have not, or not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are the one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? If you're given, if you're given your life to Jesus, righteousness, the righteousness of God has been imparted into you. If you've given your life to Jesus, the righteousness of God is imparted into you. Why? Because through Jesus, you receive God's nature. Sin and dominion of Satan cannot have authority over you because Jesus is your Lord. It's time for the church to wake up and to do what God sent us here to do so that we can go home. Listen, you don't have a trailer in heaven. Sorry, folks. You don't have a trailer in heaven, okay? You don't have a two-bit shack in heaven, all right? you got a mansion sitting on streets of gold just waiting on you. Bless God. Now, that home is your right and your privilege. That home is your right and your privilege. You can have a nice home here too if you're willing to believe God for it and claim it. Amen? Now, I've learned that I have a right for my body to line up with the Word of God that says I'm healed. So I don't get sick. Bless God. I don't get sick because I know my body's lined up with the Word of God. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Jesus said that sin and sickness and disease will not have dominion over you, over you either. It cannot have it, okay? People learn to take preventive medicine every day through the Word of God. We need to take preventive medicine through the Word of God. The Bible says that it is health to your flesh. It also says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Be happy, bless God. So you need to learn to laugh, amen? A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. As a believer, you shouldn't have to try faith. Just exercise your right as a member of the body of Christ. You have a right to anything in the Bible. It's amazing to me how many times with all the power and authority that we've been given, the body of Christ is beat down and destroyed. And there's no excuse for that. I'm just suffering through these things because God's trying to show me something. Not, okay? (laughs) Yeah, he's trying to show you something. He's showing you how to live uh, in this Word of God and claim your rights as citizens of heaven. That's what he's trying to show you this morning. He wants us to claim our rights as citizens of heaven and claim them, amen, and claim them. Those rights are blood brought. Jesus suffered and died to give you the rights for this new covenant that we have. He raised you up with Jesus and seated you in heavenly places. He has given His name, His blood, His authority, His power, His spirit. He has given you His rights. Don't wait another minute. Claim them. Claim the rights as a child of God. Amen.